Shalom and good day all, this is Tehillin29, back again for another anime review. This time I'll be covering Season 2 of Tonikawa Over the Moon, or and it's sometimes called Fly Me to the Moon. And with this I'll be just going through the episodes, and talking a little bit about the episodes, and also going over the synopsis of what's given to me via Crunchyroll. And then after that, I'm going to give the overall review of Season 2. And after this video, uh, there'll be one covering uh, Season 2, Over the Moon, High School Days. So, with this season, we only have 13 episodes. Now, the first episode in this season is basically a bit of a recap of the last season or a little bit of a recap of the last season and then bringing us into the beginning of this season so it's called episode zero never one to miss a chance to pry into yuzuki's married life or yuzaki's married life kanami proposes a blank and Konami, we learn, is a friend of Nasa, uh, Nasa Tsukasa, or Nasa Yuzuki, and through that we also learn a little bit about her in his relationship, or his friendship with her. Moving into episode one, it's called All Because of You. And the synopsis is, does a marriage need a wedding? The Yuzuki's grapple with that question as Nasa learns just blank. <laughs> um, to which they start to sort of like, with the question being brought up with the Yuzuki's being sort of like married, do they need a wedding? Um, this comes from one of the supporting characters that indicate, okay, now that they're married, about the only thing that they're missing is a bit of a wedding, to which it leads them to eventually sort of like pick up magazines. And with those magazines, they have a look at the costs and also the places to sort of like go and how much it would also cost them to get a wedding done. Next is episode two, which is on the subject of happiness. Old friends resurface in Nasa's life, so Nasa Yuzuki. Um, we get to get a introduction to one of his older teachers, to which I'm roughly guessing that we're going to see this older, uh, this old teacher in the high school days, and we learn about. He's teaching Yanagi and also how in his class that <laughs> in his own way he's a bit of a troublemaker in that how much he actually knows and in some cases embarrasses the teacher. <laughs> really fun, really good episode. Next is before the fireworks go out in episode three as Sukasa and Nasa head to a big name theme park where they have a run run in with of course, Nasa's old friends once again. <laughs> and she starts to learn a little bit more about his life. And um, they end up attending some things at the theme park together. Um, and also one of the theme park's themes is that um, you got to go in as a couple, which is, I think, really clever with the episode. And... Of course, with Nasa and Sukasa already being a married couple, they have no choice. They sort of like arrange the rest with the other friends that are there. Next is episode four, Spots the Kiss. 
Uh, NASA's knowledge is a big help to people around him, but even when he's not sure about the uh, blank <laughs> um, in regards to sort of like learning of places to go enjoy, basically kissing his wife, his fiance. And through this, they do actually do find a place to which they can enjoy together to, well, enjoy a kiss together because they're a married couple. Episode 5 brings us into the ex the exciting expert of the hot springs. Thanks to Konami, uh, the Yuzakis find themselves on a honeymoon on a trip to Kusatsu, the home of some of the most um, amazing hot springs. And whilst they're on this journey, they get to uh, enjoy a little bit of personal time with themselves, but also together within the story and it was really heartwarming and I really enjoyed how the episode went. Next is Underneath the Moon. Uh, to which the synopsis is the Kasatsu trip continues but will Nasa work up the courage to ask Sukasa to join him in and I've, we get uh, this slowly leads to an a event to which within the next upcoming episodes that they're going to go on a bit of a camping trip and with that camping trip they learn a little bit more about their friends and whatever our which will eventually occur um episode seven an expanding world scorching summer heat motivates the yuzakis to purchase a new air conditioner uh which um, with this particular episode, NASA ends up finding one of, or coming across one of his old friends who also is able to help him install the air conditioner into the place that they're at for the time being until they're able to sort of like move back out into the apartment that they lost. Episode Eight is called When You Actually Like It. NASA is forced to consider how to verbally into uh, how to be verbally intimate with his wife Sukasa uh, before Konami encourages a certain event within the story. With this, it's sort of like we have NASA trying to find the words to which he can continue to, I guess, show how much he loves his wife. And in the process, we also get the same reflection from uh, Sukasa, to which she tries to, what's the word I'm looking for? Trying to reciprocate, uh, to reciprocate his feelings. And we do end up having a very nice episode in this. And they do actually get along within the story as it's sort of like being within season one, season, uh, and whatever of what's been happening of season two. Moving into episode nine, A Summer Day, after Sukasa grapples with her technology anxieties, uh, the, Yuzaki, uh, the Yuzakis are greeted by two of their friends, and this eventually leads to the beginning of what would be the summer camping trip to which they go out together to which episode 10 is called thank you so with the synopsis for that the yuzakis are joined by their friends and family for their camping trip but nasa but can nasa overcome um his own certain anxieties in regards to the trip and we do get to see a bit of bit more interaction between him and also a friend of Sukasa's who also helps him out as well and also gives him a little bit of a secret <laughs> about um Sukasa uh, but we don't like get an overall understanding of the secret yet 
um, into episode 11, as the sun sets on the group, the camping troop, uh, Toti- uh, Tokiko and Konami have a special surprise in store, which we end up having, with the surprise in store, basically a setting up of, like, the wedding of these characters for these two on the camping trip, and I must admit, it was lovable, it was heartwarming, it was absolutely enjoyable, and moving into episode time, in all the times to come, and blank, um, whatever it's meant to say after that, Nasa and Sakasa are back home, just in time to find out that they'll be moving into their new apartment, uh, which has now been restored after the fire, and now there's um, some decisions that they need to make between them, and whether they choose to go back or they choose to stay where they are, uh, save up and be able to get a place of their own. So for the overall rating of the main characters in this story, I give an 8.5 out of 10. For the supporting characters, a 8 out of 10. For the soundtrack in this series, an 8 out of 10. And for the overall story, an 8.5 out of 10. I must admit, after this, I'm still really looking forward to reading more of the manga, and I definitely recommend pick up the manga to this series. It's really worth it, and you and you'll get so much more enjoyment as well, not just from the animated series, but also from the manga itself, as you see this couple grow together, and one thing that this shonen series is, um, it shows a really nice balance between the male as well as the female, but also in giving an understanding from both sides, And it's not biased towards one person or another. But for this slice of life romantic comedy, I have really come to enjoy this story. So until then, let's keep it colourful and have yourself an awesome day.